Ernest Hemingway said famously that he's in search of one true sentence. The writer of me always agrees with that, in search of one true sentence. The farmer in me is always in, in search of one true furrow and uh, harder to achieve. And the, the more critical you are of yourself, the harder that is to achieve. Uh, welcome to spring plowing here, 2024. What's today, March 14th? Something like that. And uh, we're starting plowing. We're picked up where we left off last fall. We did a pretty shameful job last fall. The ground turned hard and I was working some horses uh, that weren't used to working and uh, I'm making a bunch of excuses. We did a poor job plowing and we're gonna write that this spring. We're, we're off to a pretty good start. We're using a Syracuse two-way sulky plow. Um, Syracuse, John Deere, they were the same thing. Um, this one's branded Syracuse. It doesn't have much fancy paint, but this is a good plow. It's got all new bolts. The points are good. The bottoms, you know, the mow board's really good. Um, the two-way plow like this, two bottoms. Uh, you don't put them both in the ground at once and turn one furrow going each direction. Truly what it's made for is side hill work. Um, that way you're always turning a furrow down the hill. Uh, I could go right to the end of this furrow, turn around, come back, put the opposite horse in the furrow and the opposite plow in the ground and uh, come back the other direction and uh, um, just keep going back and forth. You, it's kind of convenient like that. Uh, very popular. We saw lots and lots of these plows around here when I was a kid. Uh, this plow is set up with a disc colder. That's just what it looks like. It's just a disc to cut a good sharp furrow wall uh, in front of the plow. Your other options are a uh, joiner, which is a miniature plow that sits in front of there. And you'll see that later on when we get into walking plows. And a lot of these Syracuse plows right on the share, right on the point, I had a piece of a knife like thing that stuck right up and that's what they used for the uh, for the joiner um, which just cuts a sharper furrow wall it, it makes it easier for this plow to do its job the job of this plow to turn the land upside down aerates the land uh, flips the weeds over it's you know this is where good farm work starts is by doing good plowing uh, good weed control starts with good plowing as does uh, you know, good cultivation. Um, when we can, we like to do our plowing in the fall. We had a lot of fall plowing done, but this piece wasn't done. Uh, what happens if you do fall plowing, the freeze and thaw throughout the winter, uh, just kind of cultivate that ground and smooth things out. And uh, boy, you end up with a lot better product. And your horses are in a lot better shape in the fall after a summer's work than they are in the spring. Uh, first point I want to make about plowing is, is the horses. Uh, the old saying is, well wintered is half summer. And if you had your horses out back eating a nasty old round bale and they weren't looking good and they weren't getting the right, the right nutrients, and now you start plowing, you're in rough shape, you know. Um, it's hard enough work. Anyway, this bear is about hard from logging and uh, they're still uh, they're shedding out and it, it's still plenty of work for them um, so you want your pair in somewhat decent shape to be plowing uh, not not just flesh but body condition uh, or not body condition excuse me, muscle condition conditioning um, just being in good shape just good physical shape um, So I like to do most of my plowing with a walking plow. And I don't, it's not my preference, but I do most of my plowing with a Pioneer walking plow. And the reason I use a Pioneer walking plow, you can still get parts for them. Uh, mine has a Oliver bottom. It's a 14 inch plow. Uh, usually I plow with a pair just because it balances better and plows better with a pair than it does three. Uh, it should have three horses on a plow like that. But quite often we switch them out. We'll use one team for half the day and the other team for the rest of the day. Uh, starting the year, and, and this is Zodiac. 
coming three-year-old. He's never plowed before that I remember. I don't think we had him in a plow last year at all. And um, starting the year out and getting the furrows right and giving them a good furrow to follow and stuff, especially if you've got to lay out new lands, I recommend using a riding plow first. Hell, don't be afraid to use a tractor plow and make sure it's scoured, shiny. Uh, my plow's in the ground. You can't see what I mean, but you see the grease on the left-hand bottom and uh, that preserves it and keeps it shiny throughout the winter. Uh, you start out with a rusty plow and everything sticks to your mull board and it's a mess. You know, plowing's a bit of a catch-22. You know, your horses aren't acting the best when you start. Your plow's not adjusted. It's not scoured. And that's when you need everything to, uh, to be at its best is, is when you're starting. Um, and then after a week of plowing, everything's right. Your horses are harder. They're in better shape. They're behaving better. Your plow's adjusted. It's scoured. And uh, hell, a week later, you could deal with a few problems. Everybody's used to it and in better shape. But that's just the way it is. It's a, it's a bit of a paradox. But, well, this is a 12-inch bottom plow. So the furrow, where Elvis is standing, is called the furrow. That should be 12 inches wide. And uh, we achieve that by having the right width eveners and uh, these horizontal hitches here. And uh, we achieve depth by uh, these levers, uh, how deep I set the plow and I, I level it out with this land wheel and uh, these vertical points here. And also how close your horses are hooked to the actual plow beam. Uh, we're a little bit limited on a sulky plow. We can't hook them too loose or the neck yoke will fall off the end of the tongue. But a uh, good rig right here. I grew up plowing with a Syracuse plow. I always used a team on a Syracuse plow on a side hill. And my dad was down here right where we are now. He always did a lot of plowing with his uh, Pioneer plow. Uh, you know, a sulky Pioneer plow with three horses. Um, so when you're plowing... You know, everybody knows the old saying, half as deep as you are wide. So, I just told you, 12 of horses can handle good. If you're going to 14, you really should have three horses. Four is even better. But 12 inches wide should be six inches deep. Um, and that's what we try to achieve, and we try to move these levers to achieve that. And a level furrow bottom, a nice sharp furrow wall, um, we aim for straight furrows. Uh, we got some cleaning up to do from last fall, but you know, a lot of people, that's the only thing they judge on is straight furrows. Well, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. Um, anyway, uh, and then we're plowing corn stubble and the corn stubble doesn't always run exactly the same as the plowing. And so sometimes there can be an illusion that makes it look like our furrows are not straight. Pretty happy with this way Zodiac starting out plowing here. I guess that's enough yakking and we'll, we'll watch some furrows turn here. I was saying that this is a 12 inch plow and 12 inches is a good plow for a pair of horses. Uh, they can plow right along and, and with sufficient rest, a good hard team of horses can plow with a 12 inch plow. If you move up to a 14 inch plow, you should have three horses. Hell, four is even better. Um, but I think you recorded everything else, Nick. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move ahead and we're going to turn some furrows here. The ground changes numerous times through this field. Uh, so I got down to maybe five inches deep there. I don't know, I'm guessing. I just set it a little deeper so I can plow six inches deep. Uh, I kind of like my uh, horizontal hitch the way it is. This wheel on a sulky plow, I didn't know this, I read this should be about two inches and we're two and a half inches or so, but 
Should be about two inches inside the furrow wall. I grew up plowing with that other type of sulky plow, not a two-way, but you know, regular pioneer type plow. And uh, you want that wheel to actually hug the inside wall of that furrow. I uh, read that in Lynn Miller's book, The uh, Plowing with Horses, and I cannot recommend that book enough. That is a tremendous book. Uh, if you're going to plow with horses, even if you just go to one festival a year or plow your garden, get that book and read it. It tells you a lot about plowing, uh, the practice of plowing as well, and why plowing not as bad as the name it's given if, if plowing is done properly. Uh, what it does for the soil, when you should plow. Mainly, the best thing, it tells you all about plow adjustments. Um, Lynn Miller, uh, editor, founder, publisher of the Small Farmer's Journal, Plowing with Horses, just a tremendous book. Uh, I'd plowed for 30 years before I read that book and um, just find it valuable. I, I must have read it five, six times through the years. Uh, I might get it out again tonight. So anyway, gonna turn some more furrow. You'll notice that plow gets a little deeper. That's gonna move that again. So we work them out little by little and looking out ahead and straighten them up each time. Some point across here, this ground changes and, uh, and this adjustment is going to be too deep. So I like to be fairly precise. I'll change this adjustment two or three times throughout this field. I don't know how many times I've plowed this particular field in my life. This is the home farm where I grew up, so it's just been a lot. But I always know that. I always know you got to change that adjustment a few times. The ground changes. The hard part is with a walking plow. <laughs> it's harder to, you don't have levers. You, you don't change the adjustment as easily. You actually move bolts and change your up and down, your horizontal hitch, your vertical hitch, sideways. Um, or, I mean, your vertical hitch up and down, your horizontal hitch, sideways, of course. You know, lengthen your heel change. You make some changes. The truth of the matter is, when I'm plowing this with a walking plow, I set it for the hardest part in the field where it plows the hardest and leave it there and sometimes I'm plowing a little too shallow and sometimes I'm plowing too deep. But yeah, it's not really feasible to make those adjustments each time as the field changes with a walk and plow. I'm not doing bad. Zodiac's been a very good boy. Notice the ground changing. We're not into quite as much gravel as we were. The plow's going to start sinking in ahead of us, maybe, I don't know, 100 feet. And I might see that adjust. In fact, I will right now. Let's, let's watch that. See if we can see it. So, up going back. Did that get a little shallower? Yeah, I looked at Go down there. Glad we're today. I feel a little bit of rain in the air.
I like plowing for a horse. Good, consistent, steady work. It just doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't pull hard, but it pulls hard enough that they know they got to be in the collar. Nick, you get out there where Ahab is, or Mojo is, and uh, watch us go around the corner. I'll show how it's going to jump. Stepped it up and get a notch, huh? River stomping. this plowing, planting, dragging, anything. Your team always wants to crowd, usually toward the inside. And you gotta be on the lines to, uh, to prevent that. Especially on a handle plow, a walking plow. But I get up here a few steps about where Elvis's hind feet are. And uh, I'm gonna step on this lever and that'll activate this ratchet here. Do you see that kind of ratchet looking thing in the wheel? Right down there. It'll activate that. It'll pull this plow up and out of the ground and we'll turn and set that, uh, set that furrow back in the ground, set that plow back in the furrow when we get to the other side. And we'll talk about something else when we get over there. the bits a lot more than they need to be for plowing. Another couple furrows will straighten them right out. They won't be. You know there's a nice balance there between working a horse enough to where they're getting some training and they're a little tired and they're listening and over training them. The guy I bought this plow from up in Vermont up by White River Junction, Mark Owen. Uh, nice man. Uh, we were having a phone conversation the other night and we we're talking about colts and breaking them and he said you know there's a big difference between a horse being dead broke and a horse being dead tired and boy do i agree with that and that's what we're doing right here we're resting um you know it's good for these guys to get a little tired get a little tired and learn something but we don't want them so tired they're they're worthless and their spirit is broke and they're you know completely desensitized uh, we want a happy middle ground we want them to know their workhorses but not be dead tired and uh, resting is all in the in the hands of the teamster you just gotta you gotta know your team and feel your team and know when to rest them you know not resting them just wears them down breaks their spirit you know breaks their wind literally um, to make them balky you just got to rest often enough, you know. You, you don't want to baby them, but you have to rest here and there. Behind the camera's Nick. He's an expert on that. That's why he works our pulling horses throughout the summer. He knows when to rest the team and uh, when they're ready to go. And uh, has a good feel for it. Probably because he grew up logging with horses. Well, our fun is about to end. We're just getting started plowing and... It's going to rain. It'll probably be too muddy tomorrow to plow. So these horses, you look at a Zodiac's flank there. They're puffing a little. No big deal, though. They're, they can handle this. Uh, give them a little rest. By the feel of this weather, we might not be out here a heck of a lot longer anyway. No, oh, here we go. The plow's out of the ground, and let's look at that uh, mull board. Um, nice and shiny scoured. Uh, I either try to put my plow inside at night or if it's going away for the year I grease it. Now if you're going to grease them make sure that plow's in a shed or something where you don't have animals. You don't want your horses licking or cows licking that grease off there. And, and uh, You can paint the bottoms also. Um, I just hate to paint these old plows. I, I'd rather grease them. <laughs> uh, and I think greasing the uh, scours a little quicker also. But. 
Don't know why I like plowing so much, but it's always been a favorite chore of mine. You know, I was listening to uh, History of the Tractor the other day. Uh, Iowa PBS put out, out a nice documentary. But he was talking about, you know, how the tractor was an improvement over horses. And um, especially for plowing, because plowing was drudgery. I hate that word. Why is it drud drudgery? I'm out here. I'm enjoying the day. I'm enjoying working this soil and being a part of the land. I'm enjoying the horses. Uh, it's not drudgery. It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's work, but it's not drudgery. Uh, hell, if I was sitting in a hundred, a hundred, I guess I'm old school, 150 horsepower tractor, you know, pulling a big no-till unit across the field after field. And I, I suppose that could be drudgery too. You know, this, this doesn't feel like drudgery to me. Uh, I get everything dialed in good with the the riding plow here and get it where I like it. I'll probably switch to a walking plow soon enough. Maybe, maybe not. I like those disc holders over here around those weeds, but um, probably we'll be switching to a uh, walk and plow. Uh, I just like the feel of it. There you go again with the drudgery. It just feels good to plow with a walk and plow. Um, you know, speaking of walk and plows, this was a walk and plow growing up. My dad always made me walk behind these. Like I said, I actually plowed side hills, pretty steep side hills, and these plows were known to, to tip over on a side hill. So uh, I was always taught to walk. And when you walk back there, you can see your furrow and you can see your adjustments a lot better um, than riding up here. Um, probably as I get closer to the end of the day and ready to switch to a walk and plow, I might walk in the furrow just to uh, get a better feel for me walking in the furrow and the horses and um, make it a little easier transition to a walk and plow. Well, we're going to keep on keeping on here. furrow wall. That's the uh, rolling colder, the disc colder doing its work. Now I'm plowing plenty deep. I'm uh, it up for this section of field here. You notice this is where it's not very gravelly.
Well, we're gonna wrap up our plowing video here. We're gonna make several more of these throughout the spring, I hope, if nothing goes wrong. And uh, I'd like you folks to watch the uh, improvement on the horses. They're not doing bad now, but they're gonna, they're gonna do better and better uh, the more they plow. Uh, terrific work for them. Uh, one thing I'm gonna leave you with, you might notice in some of these videos, there's extra noise here and there coming from the horse's rear. Some words of wisdom from old farmers and they were always pretty thoughtful to say something like this around this time of year when we started spring work. A farting horse will never tire, a farting man's the man to hire. <laughs>